7 News, on your side at 6 a.m. Right now on 7 News at 6 a.m., we're following overnight developments in the war in Ukraine as Russian forces begin to close in on the capital city. And the war could mean a change in topic for President Biden's State of the Union address. Our national correspondent weighs in live. And we're tracking a rally that's happening this morning here near the National Mall over COVID-19 mandates. What we expect to see coming up. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock on this very busy Tuesday. I'm Robert Burton. I'm Ashley Rodriguez, and we are also watching the Tidal Basin today as the National Park Service reveals its prediction, bloom prediction, for the cherry blossoms. And if the weather keeps getting nice like it is today, Veronica, peak bloom could come real soon. That's what I'm thinking. Last year was March 28th. I think it could be a day or two earlier, but we're going to be checking in with meteorologist Eileen Whalen in just a couple of minutes. It's all part of our latest blog, too, what the National Park Service is going to be looking at for peak bloom this year. Right now we've got some scattered high clouds out there. Look at Atlanta, Maryland across the area. Just a few clouds, but more of those clouds are going to be moving in by 8, 9 o'clock and then moving out by 2 p.m. Right now, because of the clear skies, temperatures are sitting sub-freezing. Fairfax Station, 27 degrees, 28 good morning district heights. So for your Fat Tuesday here, temperatures will warm quickly. 40 degrees by 9 o'clock this morning and then close to 50 by noon. High temperature today, 58 degrees with more sunshine coming our way. And that's pretty comfortable. So have the sunglasses for today and just a warm jacket. You're really going to love today, tomorrow, even more. Taking a look at the road starting in Woodbridge where we're seeing a closure of Route 1 both ways right between Port Potomac Avenue and Cardinal Drive. Now, Prince William County Police will be here for quite some time. I'm suggesting our alternate Indus Drive. We're going to get a closer look at what's going on here. We sent SkyTrack 7 there. We'll have that better picture in my next report. Looking elsewhere, eastbound on I-66. If that's your ride to work, we got a little bit of a roadblock. The right lane is blocked because of some road work right at the Beltway. Cars are moving past it. It's passable, but you're going to be not at top speed, around 48 miles per hour there. And 270 southbound, it is smooth sailing. Good morning, Frederick. As you make your way to the ICC, you'll do so at a nice pace. And keep in mind, street closures are going in effect as early as 530 today around the Capitol because of the State of the Union address. That's your traffic watch. This morning, Russian forces are stepping up their invasion of Ukraine. I can show you a convoy of Russian military vehicles and tanks 40 miles long is advancing toward Ukraine's capital right now. Overnight, a new round of bombs hit the city of Kyiv as the Russian invasion entered day six. Ukraine's president is requesting a no-fly zone over his nation, but the White House dismisses that idea. It would essentially mean the U.S. military would be shooting down planes, Russian planes. That is definitely escalatory. That is not something the president wants to do. In Moscow, the Russian economy is feeling the shock of Western sanctions this morning. Russians have been waiting in long lines at banks, which are running out of cash. Their currency is crashing, but Russian President Vladimir Putin remains defiant. And here at the alert desk, we are seeing devastating images right now of a big attack that happened in Kharkiv. Look at this. I mean, this was a missile attack on a government building, but a lot of the buildings in the area are also just burnt out. We know around 20 people were injured, at least here, but I was just looking at some more accounts of other people being injured and killed, and this is ongoing. Lindsay, thank you. Well, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan is also among the many showing support for Ukraine. Hours ago, he attended a prayer service at Michael the Archangel Ukrainian Catholic Church in Baltimore. The governor also announced he's ending a decades-old sister-state relationship with Russia in response to the invasion. Hogan said after witnessing Russia's invasion of Ukraine, he's, quote, obliged to immediately dissolve and terminate that relationship. And according to current estimates, more than half a million Ukrainians have fled the country in just the last few days. And D.C. chef Jose Andres and his World Central Kitchen are doing their part to feed them. And we heard from the chef overnight. He posted this message to Twitter while you were sleeping. Listen. We've been learning all from the horrors of the past. People we need to speak up against. Leaders that are breaking us apart. We cannot let more Putin's of the world. A very emotional message is that, and World Central Kitchen has been on the ground in Eastern Europe for days now. This is video of one of their many sites in Poland and Ukraine. Part of the World Central Kitchen's funding comes from a grant from Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. He made that donation last year. Yeah, half million people fleeing mm -hmm. the country right now, and today 
We are following a big day here in the district. Tonight, President Biden will deliver his first State of the Union address to a joint session of Congress. This, perhaps the most important speech of his career, as his team continues to focus on the conflict in Ukraine. We're going to bring in national correspondent Christine Frizzell, joining us live from our Capitol Hill Bureau. Christine, what should we expect to hear from President Biden tonight? Hey, good morning, Ashley. So one of the things we often hear in Washington from lawmakers or the White House is, hey, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. In other words, we have teams of people to make it so we can focus on multiple priorities. That being said, it's become quite obvious that President Biden's domestic agenda, including salvaging parts of Build Back Better, will be taking a backseat to the war in Ukraine. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki told reporters yesterday there's no question this speech, his first State of the Union, will be different tonight than it may have been a few weeks or months ago. So expect one key focus to be on the role of America in the world today. While there's been some criticism from the right for the White House not implementing sanctions against Russia fast enough or strict enough, it's been sort of remarkable how the world has really come together. One of the most recent blows to Russia's economy sanctioning the Russian Central Bank, for example, was a coordinated action from the U.S. and the European Union. And President Biden has been a central part of helping to build what is now seen as a global coalition against Russia's actions and in support of Ukraine. Look for the president to focus on democracy versus autocracy and the need to build on this. So we're told he will also address our economy, including inflation and unveil some new proposals for how to fight back. We're also told his COVID-19 team has been spending the last few weeks on a new plan to deal with COVID. The numbers, of course, have been moving in the right direction for our country, but make no mistake, this comes at a time when the president's approval rating has been hovering at just about 37 to 40 percent, depending on which poll you look at. So uh, this is a time they really are trying to uh, get some momentum going here. And Christine, on that note, it is traditional for the president to hit the road after giving the State of the Union to take any policy proposals directly to the American people. Is that going to happen this time? Yeah, so President Biden is planning to head to Superior, Wisconsin tomorrow on Wednesday to sort of take that as domestic agenda on the road. He wants to talk more about Build Back Better to try to build some support for that. And also remember, this sort of seems like a lifetime ago in Capitol Hill time, but he was able to get the bipartisan infrastructure bill passed. He wants to talk about, you know, what we're actually seeing, the roads that are going to get built, the bridges that are going to get fixed. So uh, that is the plan, at least for the day after the State of the Union. I, I have a feeling it will depend on global events how much more he can travel domestically after that. Thank you, Christine, for shedding light on tonight's speech. And keep in mind, road closures are in place around the Capitol complex ahead of the address. If you can avoid driving near the Capitol tonight, then do so. Make sure to follow Britt Waters on Twitter. She's on your side helping you find your workarounds. Now, on the ground, fencing and the barricades are now in place. Our John Gonzalez is following the heightened security measures. At 630, he'll tell you what the chief of Capitol Police is saying ahead of this historic moment. Your time now, 607, and they wanted to arrive in time for the State of the Union, but this morning, the trucker convoy that's driving to the DMV, well, they're in Missouri right now, so that's not happening. They left California last week with plans to block traffic in our area, all to protest vaccine mandates. In the meantime, 7 News' Kristen Powers is live on the National Mall following a different protest with a similar message. Good morning, Kristen. Robert, good morning. Yeah, so it's quiet now here on the National Mall, but in just a few hours, we expect organizers to come here. Uh, this is the Sylvan Theater area right by the Washington Monument and set up for their rally. Here's what we know about the event so far. The organizers are a nonprofit called KNK Foundation. It will start around noon, go throughout the day until 8 p.m. It's unclear how many people will be taking part of this event, but the permit does say the group expects about five. 500 people. They say it will be a peaceful demonstration with Christian music and speakers against COVID-19 mandates. They also are showing support for the truck convoys we've been reporting on uh, and lifting restrictions in D.C. and across the U.S. The CDC did just actually change guidance on masks, saying most people can stop wearing them as long as cases continue to fall. The indoor mask mandate here in D.C. is also officially no more. So We'll see uh, what this demonstration has to say and what their uh, real message is here. We will be tracking this throughout the day, so we'll keep you posted as people start to show up here along the National Mall. Back to you.
Stockton. Thank you for that. And take a look at this. Right now, Metro buses are lined up in Arlington. Sources tell 7 News they're standing by to block routes if a convoy approaches downtown streets. Metro confirms that D.C. will reimburse Metro for the cost of these buses. Ahead of tonight's State of the Union address, a demonstration is set for this morning. The restaurant workers-led organization called ROC United will deliver a State of the Restaurant Workers address. The event begins at 10 this morning on the grounds of the U.S. Capitol near the Cannon House office building. ROC United plans to unveil a Restaurant Workers Bill of Rights. I'm at the alert desk right now. We have some new information that we've just put up on our website, WJLA.com. And it's Abbott Nutrition that's expanding its baby formula recall. And this is because a second infant has died of a bacterial infection. This recall is now including some lots of Similac PM6040 powdered instant formula. This is a story that we have been following very closely ever since last week. You know, we interviewed some mothers that have been struggling to get their kids something to eat. All of this on our website, WJLA.com. If you have any of that, please be aware. Okay, Lindsay, thank you for that, 610. And you may have heard some noise if you were near Marine Corps Base Quantico yesterday, and you can expect to hear it again today and tomorrow. The base is conducting a live fire drill right now, live fire drills, that is, and they're scheduled between 8 and 4 again today and tomorrow. So after two years of pandemic cancellations this summer, the Chincoteague Island Pony Swim returns. The popular event raises money for a volunteer fire department on Virginia's eastern shore. This year's swim in July will include two fireworks shows and a month-long carnival, in addition to the traditional pony auction. And this story is still trending on our website this morning. The story of a basketball player from the DMV stuck in Ukraine. 7 News has been staying in touch with him and his family, and we are updating you on his efforts to get out. Let's go live now and take a look at the cherry blossom trees oh. along the tidal basin. We are just hours away from finding out when they will reach peak bloom this year. And yes, we are. We've got a morning chill, too, to go along with that here on this March 1st. But look at this. Our temperatures will climb from sub-freezing all the way up into the mid and upper 50s later today. The next time sub-freezing, not till Friday. Back with more of those rain chances. And of course, what's up with the blossoms right after this short break? You're watching 7 News on your side at 6 a.m. And right now at 614 this morning, we're following a big step toward closure for the family of Davon McNeil. Nearly two years ago, the 11 year old was killed by a straight bullet while leaving on July 4th a peace picnic in southeast Washington. Well, now the man accused of pulling the trigger. This man pleads guilty. Carlo Henneral accepted a plea deal in which he admitted to a charge of voluntary manslaughter instead of facing trial for first degree murder. He faces between 13 and 16 years in prison. Earlier this month, three other men pleaded guilty to the same charge. They face up to 10 years in prison. I'm at the alert desk and right now we're seeing people arrive in Greece from Ukraine. Now we know about a half million people have fled Ukraine and this is uh, two busloads that showed up in Athens, Greece and uh, you know to a lot of hugs right there. Um, a lot of people on board are women and children. Uh, you know a lot of men stayed back to fight but we're also hearing that in some cases women are dropping their children off with relatives. They plan to go back to help with the war effort. Thank you, Lindsay. 615 is your time and we saw Asian businesses discriminated against at the onset of the pandemic. Well, now we're seeing something similar happening to restaurants that serve Russian food. Yeah, in the last few days, vandals targeted the Russia House restaurant in DuPont Circle twice. And the owner says his business has no ties to the Russian government. 7 News anchor Melanie Hastings joins us live in studio this morning with the owner's message to the city. Yeah, well, Ashley and Robert, this morning, D.C. police are trying to figure out who vandalized that restaurant. Not once, but twice. In the last week, vandals shattered at least two windows and they placed signs outside the building. Building. One read, House of Murderers. Now, the restaurant does serve Russian food, but the owners have no connection to Russia. Seven News spoke with a tourist who's renting an Airbnb upstairs. If they're not Russian, first of all, or if they are Russian and they don't support the invasion, I've, I feel really bad for them. Well, the restaurant has been temporarily closed because of the pandemic. So far, no one's been arrested in connection with these incidents of vandalism. Guys. You know, and that's the thing, Melanie, is that we don't know if these folks even support what's happening in Russia. We did see Russian people protest against their own president. So going back to this restaurant, has the owner done anything to try to prevent more vandalism from occurring? Well, 
they did one thing. They took down the Russian flag that was flying outside the restaurant wow. right next to the American flag. Okay. So maybe that can help. Hopefully so. Hopefully yeah. so. Mel, thank you. Mel, thanks. So it's going to take a little while longer for recreational marijuana sales to start in Virginia. State Democrats pushed an effort to legalize recreational pot sales by this fall, but Republicans just blocked the bill along party lines. GOP members say the bill wouldn't have allowed enough time to sort through all the issues that they want to change. Retail sales could start in 2024 under the law that passed last year. And a big reminder on Metro today, Metro's oldest smart trip cards no longer work on buses or trains. Now, you can get a free replacement and transfer values at Metro Center online or by mail. You can see how in the free 7 News app, along with what to look for to see if your card will work. Speaking of Metro, let's in to Britt Waters, who's tracking your commute this Hello. morning. That's right. I mean, besides your expired card, there's not too many issues on Metro, just the typical delays that we're used to. Mark VRE, you are good to go. Now, Skytrack 7 is in Woodbridge, Virginia, showing us the street closure. This is a crash investigation that is still going on. Prince William County Police told us that they might be there all morning long. That closure exists between Port Potomac Avenue and Cardinal Drive. We're suggesting our alternate of Indus Drive to get around that during these hours. 95 northbound, if that's your ride to work, Good morning to you, Dale City, Virginia. You can see we already got some volume building from Dumfries Road to 123. So if you can head out just a little bit earlier today, it would be a good decision. And street closures are going to go into effect surrounding the straight State of the Union address as early as 5.30 p.m. So right when a lot of people are getting off of work, avoid these roads around the Capitol. Even more will have portions closed at 7 p.m. If you have to go around there, use Massachusetts Avenue. All of this will be tweeted out on my Twitter and, of course, at WJLA.com. Brit clouds are on the move this morning, so I panned our camera all the way to the east. Ocean City, Rehoboth, this is Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, live right now. And if you look hard, I'm seeing a little bit of light pink and white. I think that's because of the cherry blossom uh, prediction coming out uh, for uh, later today, this uh, morning around 10 a.m. All right, let's talk about temperatures because today's the start of meteorological spring. Our temperatures, they jump up very quickly from being in the lower 50s, where we typically are this March 1st to lower 60s. And then by the end of meteorological spring, we're 73 to 80 degrees, more like April temperatures coming our way for the end of the week and upcoming weekend. In fact, we could be looking at a high temperature close to 80 degrees one of those days on the seven day forecast. Today, again, chilly this morning. Make sure the kids have something warm on. A warm jacket will do. Not going to need the gloves or to be all bundled up. We will have some clouds moving in late morning through early afternoon, topping out at 46. That's still comfortable. And then 58 degrees when they get off the bus. Sure, yes, it's going to be one of those uh, days they'll want to hit the park. So here's a look at the clouds moving through our area. As far as tomorrow goes, we're going to move in the opposite direction and go from sunshine to clouds, but again, still not expecting really any rain at all. So 39 to 43 for early tomorrow morning we will max out at 64 for a high temperature. That's going to be the warmest of the work week. And I know you got some things you want to squeeze in, like maybe heading to the Caps game right now. Dry, say a warm hoodie will do. The puck drops at 7 p.m., 41 degrees. That's for your Thursday, your Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 72 degrees on Sunday. And Sunday morning is our next chance of rain. It's a weak weather maker that comes in. However, some stronger weather systems for next week will have us being pretty unsettled. I've got maybe a 20% chance, a little bit of rain coming our way from Monday. But look at this, 77, that's close to 80 degrees. Of course, with the temperatures bouncing all over the place, like lottery number still, it's an easy way to track it with the Stormwatch 7 weather app. Just download it right there. All right, so 27 degrees Friday night, and then almost 80 degrees Monday morning. <laughs> it's insane. Belting around for sure. <laughs> it's March. So you'll remember two weeks ago, we followed a school board meeting that lasted more than nine hours. That same school board is about to meet again, and 7 News is following it for you, so you don't have to go. <laughs> and a local woman with a rare disease just got hundreds of thousands of dollars for her foundation. It's a story you'll see only on 7 News. Good morning, everyone. So a reminder, through the month of March, 7 News is asking you to help kick hunger in the DMV. If you watch us, you know about this campaign. We're partnering with FH Fur and Safeway to raise money for the Capital Area Food Bank to donate. Visit WJLA.com slash hunger. You can even text feed the DMV to 50155. And every time we do this campaign, we raise tens of thousands of dollars to feed the hungry here in the DMV.
A story you'll see only on 7 News, a victory for a local woman who's battling a rare disease called stiff person syndrome. So the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative just awarded Dr. Tara Zier's nonprofit a $600,000 grant. The money will be used to combat the disease and help people who have it. Now, Zier was a Montgomery County dentist when she was diagnosed with the disease a few years ago. It feels like a vice on my neck and my back. People have muscle spasms uh, so severe they break bones and dislocate joints. Oh, ouch. Zier quit her job to focus on her health and to start a nonprofit. The grant from Mark Zuckerberg and his wife, Priscilla Chan, will be used to build a patient registry and support research. The cause of stiff person syndrome remains a mystery. Glad to see awareness on that right there. Okay, 625, and in case you missed it, D.C. now has a second statue inside the Capitol complex. It depicts Pierre L'Enfant, who designed the plan for the district. And with this installation, D.C. now joins the 50 states with each having two statues in the building. The district's other statue depicts abolitionist Frederick Douglass. Okay, I'm at the alert desk right now, and we are working with our partners at ABC News to get some video in of the attack in Kharkiv. I'll have that for you in just a few minutes. We're also live at the Tidal Basin this morning, new at 6.30 as the sun is coming up. We are talking with the National Park Service before they make their prediction for when the cherry blossoms will reach peak bloom. And look at all of this activity from our shot of SkyTrack 7. This is Route 1 northbound. You see that because of a crash investigation, traffic is being diverted right here at Port Potomac. Once you get by there, you're on, we're on your side with an alternate of Indus Drive. They're going to be there for quite some time. Prince William County Police told us they're continuing that investigation. So plan to use this alternate to get where you need to go. That's your traffic watch. We'll be back with more 7 News this morning at 6 a.m. in just a bit. You're watching 7 News on your side at 6 a.m. Right now at 6.30, we are live watching security tighten around the Capitol as President Biden prepares to address a joint session of Congress. And he was trapped in a war zone, but now we're hearing some good news from a local basketball player who struggled to escape Ukraine. And you'll remember this intense school board meeting from two weeks ago. I called the question. I called the question. The question's been called. No, I'm sorry. That cannot happen. According to Robert's rules of order. Yeah, and that went on for about uh, nine hours or so. So now we are hours away from Spotsylvania County school leaders meeting again. And we are watching to see what happens next. Good Tuesday morning to you. I'm Ashley Rodriguez. And I'm Robert Burton. So we're also hours away from hearing when the National Park Service thinks peak bloom will happen for the cherry blossoms. We are live at the Tidal Basin waiting for that announcement. And it's the perfect day for it. It's March 1st. And Veronica Johnson is here. Spring is in the air. 19 days until spring. I think it's going to be right. early, Veronica. Yeah. Yes, and I think so, too. Yeah, uh, because looking at the next couple of days, uh, next couple of weeks, temperature is really going to be high. And 26 days, guys, until the Cherry Blossom uh, Festival hits. But look at the sky this morning. Really pretty. Live from Leesburg, Virginia. Just some high clouds there. Same thing here in Virginia at Dirt Farm Brewing. Beautiful sky, but clouds are on the move. Some clouds moving in late. Late morning for early afternoon, 35 degrees right now. Temperatures been hovering around freezing. So 58 degrees this afternoon, more sunshine later today. If you can wait after 2, 3 o'clock, that's going to be uh, the sun max for today. Again, close to 60 degrees. Here's why I think we're going to hit uh, peak kind of early, maybe a day earlier than last year. We've got 60s coming up tomorrow, close to 80 degrees next Monday. Britt? Look at this site. Uh, Prince William County Police are still on the scene northbound on Route 1. That's in Woodbridge, Virginia, where you're seeing them being diverted right at Port Potomac. That's because of an ongoing crash investigation between Port Potomac Avenue and Cardinal Drive. Use our alternate of Indus Drive. Looking elsewhere, 95 southbound Howard County. Good morning to you as you make your way towards the Beltway. It's smooth sailing right now, so hit the road early if you can. Trend is looking good. Metro Mark Vieri, no reports of any issues so far. I would suggest taking transit this morning, especially if you work over by the Capitol, because by the time you get off of work, it's going to be lots of street closures in place. It's just easier to get on the rails and get out of there. Those street closures can go into place as early as 530 p.m. and even more go into effect at 7 p.m. That's your traffic watch.
All right, Britt, thank you. Well, this morning, Russia's army is getting closer to Ukraine's capital. And take a look at this ominous satellite image right here, which shows the convoy of troop trucks, tanks, and artillery. And this stretches, forget this, about 40 miles. No one's quite sure how many forces are involved here. But the convoy's leading edge is just a few miles from Kyiv right now. All right, I am at the alert desk and I wanted to share with you some video that we just got from our partners at ABC News. So go ahead and take a look because this is video that was shot off of a computer screen and what it's showing is the moment of impact when that missile hits the building. Look at that. I mean, you can see why that scene looks the way it was and we just got more information from our partners as well. Again, this is happening in Kharkiv. This is the central square. It hit uh, the civilian administration building. This video actually shows that huge projectile hitting next to the regional state uh, administration building, causing just a huge blast. Well, video there, Lindsay, and we have more to show you here. Hearing directly from a woman in Ukraine, and this morning, uh, she spoke to 7 News from a shelter in her basement. I uh, would like to go away, but I am very afraid about my life, my family. So that's Olga, and she's in Kharkiv, which is about six hours to the east of Kiev, the capital city. Well, she shared this video of a school building on fire, and she says she's seen lightly armored Russian vehicles in her neighborhood, and one of those vehicles uh, was destroyed by the Ukrainian military. She's not even sure why Russian troops are in her neighborhood, since it's mostly residential. Tell everybody, please stop this, stop this war. We are peaceful people. Now, Olga has a cousin living in D.C. who she is continuously providing updates to as the attacks continue. And so many of these stories are just so heartbreaking, and many of us are waking up feeling helpless, unable to help people. But I do have some good news for you. We've been telling you about a local basketball star who found himself stuck in Ukraine where he was playing professional when the war broke out. Many of you have been reading about Maurice Creek on our website, and we've been staying in touch with him and his family. And this morning, 7 News anchor Adriana Hopkins is live in the studio with some good news. Adriana? Yes, after a long journey, Mo is out of Ukraine this morning. 70 Sports got Abraham, was in touch with him and his parents, and he learned Mo got out across Ukraine's border with Moldova with the help of a retired Green Beret who lives not far from here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. After finally leaving Ukraine, I was speechless. I mean, he called me and he was like, Mom, I'm free. And I'm like, what? You're free? I'm just screaming and I'm just starting to cry and I'm jumping up and down. I'm just, you know, just hysterical. So again, Mo made his way out of Ukraine of the border of Moldova with the help of a retired Green Beret who lives not too far from here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And again, he made that first call to his mom. He continued his drive overnight heading into Romania. He eventually plans to make it to France and then fly home to Dulles from there. Yeah, we were just reporting on this yesterday and we listened to his mom just so worried, so worried that he wasn't going to be able to make it. So this is an incredible ending. We also understand he was taking a lot of risks doing this. Right. So at one point he said he had to travel through the city of Odessa. And right now that is a big target for Russian forces. Hands down. Best story of the day. Adriana, thank you for that. 636 and just hours from now, President Joe Biden will address the nation amid a time of international crisis and high inflation at home. And in our last half hour, national correspondent Christine Fazal laid out what we could hear in tonight's State of the Union address. In the meantime, if you're driving into D.C. today, then you'll probably know about the heightened security around Capitol Hill. 7 News' John Gonzalez is live in the Capitol complex right now this morning with a closer look at the measures in place. Good morning, John. Robert, good morning. Yeah, there was a lot of discussion over the past several weeks how to secure the perimeter here, and it looks much like what we saw last year during the inauguration and already this morning, the ramps to get you into town have police and big trucks ready to block things off in just a little bit. Now, ahead of tonight's historic address, you mentioned inflation, Robert. Well, according to a recent USA Today poll, the top concern in the nation 
by far is inflation at 27 percent. Other hot button issues Americans would like to see the president address tonight include voting rights, racial injustice and immigration. Now, while this goes on inside, again, outside, out of, out of an abundance of caution, U.S. Capitol Police have once again erected the large fencing around the U.S. Capitol complex, again, similar to what we saw last year. Police Chief Tom Manger wrote in a statement, quote, our department's mission to protect the United States Congress, the Capitol, and the legislative process remains unwavering. D.C. Delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton has already been very vocal, saying she wants the fencing down as soon as possible after this address. Now, despite the economic growth and low employment lately, 51 percent of the country, according to the same survey, believes the economy is in a recession or a depression and won't be out of it anytime soon.